Can you leave that on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, can you hear me? No. Sorry. Just try again. Just put it that way so that it doesn't be back again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, we start by welcoming everyone to the first meeting of the coordinating committee of this new year. Particularly welcome to new members of the committee and new members of the council. Um, and I hope that we'll have a good working relationship throughout the year and we'll achieve um, uh, something reasonably coherent by the end of this. Um, have I got the apologies for absence? I know that, um, that you'll be in the week of time. Yeah? Jerry yeah, is, is taking place in Tom. That's all. Okay. Um, and the next item on the agenda is uh, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest on the agenda tonight? No? Now I'm going to ask you all to be clear that nobody is subject to the party whip. That scrutiny is, is uh, a bit of a that's a um, But the minutes now of the meeting that was held on the 23rd of February, which seems a lifetime away. Um, but can I ask for those of you who were here on the 23rd of February? Now the next item on the agenda is a notice of motion that um, has eventually found its way to this committee. Um, but I've had a representation made today that the two, the mover and the seconder, are not able to be here tonight and they've asked if we can um, defer this to the next meeting which is in September. And um, I think that's a reasonable thing to do since they told to come into further meeting today. So I've agreed to that. So we'll be taking that on the meeting of the And the next item on the agenda, um, Joe, are you going to you, uh, introduce this? It's um, the remit of uh, the procedural. Yes, quite happy to, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, quite happy to. Uh, hopefully, the, the street of report I refer to you uh, for, the, for items uh, five and uh, six, really, just to outline really what, uh, what we're expecting uh, from, our, from our policy and performance uh, committees, uh, particularly in terms of the relationship with, with, with other uh, 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 policy and performance committees and, and the, the oversight that we have uh, in terms of opening scrutiny. Um, so I really intend to go into great detail on either this report or the next one because I think that they, they, they do in a sense say what they, they need to themselves. It, it, it's an annual thing, we obviously update them uh, on that basis. Uh, and we just hear from members to, uh, okay. to debate and accept the recommendations or something. Has anybody got any comments you'd like to make on agenda item five? Yes, Bill and Steve, whichever you want to Thanks, Chair. Thanks, um, Chair. Appendix one on the calling procedure, page 20. Having sat on quite a few callings last year, um, the, the, the idea of this time limit, I felt it a bit stifled sometimes on, on both sides of, of, of any arguments. I felt as though we were being rushed, and five minutes it doesn't seem a long time because I, I know the reason for it. Some people walk along like I might be doing now, but. Um, when we're there to scrutinise, surely we need to hear what the people are going to say. And hopefully the, the, the chair could direct if the people are concerned, people do go off, off on a tangent on things. And surely that would be the chair's position to jump in there. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not averse to increasing the time, depending on what members think. Yeah. Uh, from the chair's perspective, um, first of all, we had a lot of comments last yeah. year. Um, I think we got better as we went on at doing them. Um, the other thing that I think is that um, some of them are very, very long. And um, I know that most of the time wasn't taken up in the introduction by the uh, mover of the call in and the cabinet member. I'm not averse to increasing the time. I don't like interrupting people on their own flow, to be honest. Especially people who aren't necessarily that used to speaking in front of other people. So um, I take the point about the chair being able to direct and I think I have to do a reasonable job of chairing but I don't like as a matter of course to interrupt people and say I don't even like to say you've only got a minute left it does completely throw yes. when you're really speaking so we'll take the point but let's see how it plays this year and maybe we won't have any calls this year <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> sure. uh, I'll just take Phil first I'm not sure 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 I'
things tend to relate, as I see it, to the explanations and the introductions and the summaries, and the summaries rather than going through projects in detail where there could be a lot of question and answer. Uh, two things I have in mind. One, that the, the new rules of 15D on page 17. Part of it learned from the experience I've had. The chair makes uh, written documentary evidence where appropriate. So um, perhaps looking to see perhaps if somebody's unable to attend but wants to put a written submission in. I think that might be what that applies to. I think that, uh, take the point again, but I think there was a, a, something which superseded that, so, which says that unless somebody is there to be questioned on a submission, it is, makes it less um, relevant, if you like. Um, if somebody has presented a submission and they're not open to be um, discussed with them, it makes it difficult to evaluate how important it is. And I think I'm right in that, aren't I? Yes, Jim. One of the tasks you have is to test the veracity of the evidence that is presented to um, a code of view, you accept a written submission. Um, clearly, you will be in a position to exercise that particular function particularly well. So, um, it does say where it's appropriate because of the chair just needs to exercise some discretion to ensure fairness um, to all sides and to include yourselves as. Uh, I, 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 I'm right, sir, just in saying that it's possible for people to submit things in a written form in advance of them. No, no, they, they can, um, because clearly uh, we do provide for them to read out statements, so they, they can submit those in advance. Um, as long as they're in, in, in attendance in person, then obviously they can be questioned in relation to any evidence they have submitted to the committee to themselves. But their attendance is a prerequisite uh, because of the need to ensure that you can exercise that scrutiny. Uh, unless, of course, the chair exercises just for that particular perceive there to be a prejudice to the party in allowing written submissions. Um, Again, yeah. Can I have a second point? Yeah. Oh. The same paragraph D. Um, I'm looking at what are the grounds where a chair may uh, not be happy about particular witnesses. Um, I find it difficult to imagine circumstances where somebody appears to be absolutely relevant or has some link to the issue, or there's children's sense, or whatever it might be. We assume they have some knowledge, some work knowledge, some professional knowledge. I find it difficult to know what grounds there might be for a chair to say, well, don't like Fred Moss or Mrs. Smith or whatever. Yeah, I understood the point, maybe. Uh, as the chair for this year, I would definitely take advice from Sturgis on, on that matter. So let's see what Sturgis does. The issue of relevance, um, and I agree. Um, I'm sure anyone proposing a call in what he told me about him says that I'm going to be relevant in that call. Uh, but you could have individuals who are effectively saying the same evidence. Uh, so an individual um, is, is effectively going to be repeating what is already going to be said by somebody else. In which case, whilst it's, it's helpful sometimes having a second opinion, but it may not necessarily be necessary for you to consider that if the point's already been made by somebody else. And, and if we look at how things worked last year, there was never an occasion when I felt the need to do that. And I hope that won't happen this year. I hope we don't have to make all this year. Walter, did you have to kind of want to make? Yeah, I'm not going to say that uh, with that discretion over the five minutes, um, it could be the chair's uh, five minutes, in other words, with your, your discretion. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't see any problem with that. If you feel that someone can give you a case and advising us of um, points that we ought to hear, well, you can use your discretion. And uh, if, if you don't think it's so, well, you'll call time.
and then also just to, to be absolutely clear in terms of the, um, the formal statutory uh, role that we have in terms of some scrutiny, uh, particularly on health scrutiny, crime and safety partnership, and also the flood risk, just to uh, find a home for those in terms of policy and performance committees, maybe so that's 2.5. Uh, other than that, again, it's an annual review, an annual update, and we'll continue to request this and be open to you. Anybody else have any questions, comments to me? Yes, Bill. Well, uh, I'm married to members experience of those who are on families and well-being because I've perhaps deputised once or twice. I just look at the number of things that's supposed to go with that body, even as set out there compared to the type lists on the other pages. And know that last year we tried spotlight sessions and all sorts of things like that in order to get through the workload. And I, I just hope that we can actually achieve things or do the detail. But I know they tried. I just wonder how we can monitor how we coach and perhaps make some. I think when we when we come to the nice and further on, on the agenda, Phil, um, which is discussing work programs, I'll talk a little bit about the work program of families and well-being. I'm happy for anybody else who's on that committee to chip in with that. Um, I've never I've never shied away from the fact that it's a very busy committee and the workload um, needs some very, very strict management. And we've got some complete pieces in place to deal with that. But I think I'll have that item later on on the agenda, um, on the work program, item nine. Um, I'm going to ask the other two chairs of the committee to talk about this now to think brief, briefly about families and wellbeing and how we can use the work program. That which might give you some reassurances that we are functioning. Um, I wouldn't say we're perfect, but we do try. Um, can I ask anybody else got a comment? Yes, Wendy, sorry. Sorry, Chair. To highlight that, um, I think as Bill said, the, the form which is needed to fit all those things into families and wellbeing is so much more than what's needed on the other two committees. And health scrutiny um, in itself could occupy us all year, frankly. Um, so it is a concern, I think, that some people together need to continue to work on to make sure that we're as vigilant as possible. Thank you very much. Um, yes, nothing really on this really than that. and how we found it sometimes not helpful um, just to see at that moment in time what's going to raise with no prior what lot of trend prior to. I, think, I think you're right and we've got the next item on the agenda item seven deals with um, performance and I think we've probably got some discussion to have about how we can have a monitor performance and certainly I know that it's subject to the discussion next to the families and well being and I would imagine that the committees have gone to and I will hopefully
whole host of reasons for that. We, we did the tax report throughout the year uh, that there were difficulties in terms of managing this. And part of the process is that in terms of when we get the corporate planning indicators, uh, when we get the corporate planning rates, uh, it is then uh, that the, the performance uh, appraisals start because really there needs to be a clear line of sight for every member of staff uh, to, to the corporate plan. Because the corporate plan is not agreed until, until the June or more often July committee, then that actually delays the, the, the process. What we've done this year is to actually start the performance appraisals early on the assumption that we can always go back to any uh, changes that the corporate plan would be. Uh, so that we have already started our performance appraisals this year. So we're actually ahead by by, by almost a quarter in, ter in terms of our in terms of our, our, our going forward with this. I think the second thing to say, Nancy, clearly it, it, there's a challenge around it, whether this is actually a corporate plan indicator or whether it's actually an indicator of good corporate health and good well-being for the organisation. And I suspect from my perspective it's probably the latter but not the former. Uh, so I just I would expect that this is something that is good uh, to monitor. Uh, but whether it's actually part of the coordinating committee's responsibility, I'm not too sure. But it's certainly it's part of the transformation and resources uh, coordinating committee because it is about the, the, the health and, and, and well-being of the workforce in terms of their, in terms of their activities. So, it, it's a, having said that, we, we did have a, a, an answer position that we wanted to achieve, and, and we failed. We failed to achieve that. So that's an indicator that we, we failed to achieve at, at the year end. Do you want to go to the next one? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The next one. In similar way to an extent, in sickness absence monitoring, we, we have for a number of years been concerned about the levels of, of sickness absence. Uh, and we did set quite a stretching target uh, last year in order to achieve 9.75% uh, in terms of lost working days. Uh, and we achieved 10.31. So we were actually within a whisker of achieving uh, what we set out to achieve. Nevertheless, we, we didn't achieve the target that's why we're it's here for the debate uh, this evening. Um, within, within the chapter report, it highlights a number of activities that did take place towards the end of the last financial year. And part of that was about holding um, from strategic director through directors through heads of service and right down to individual team manager levels accountable for, for, for their levels of sickness of their particular teams. Um, it does mean that we, we, we will have a far uh, stronger uh, organisation approach to this. Uh, we did see, therefore, an increase in in deterioration of, of, uh, of sickness absence towards the end of last financial year. So I'm, I'm pleased that in this current financial year, I actually think that, that we'll see significant improvements again. I think what I would say as well is that we, we, we always anticipate and wait uh, for, um, the, uh, for men, because that's when the Northwest employers uh, provide their detail around the whole of the Northwest. And I'm actually pleased to say that when we when we've We've discussed this in the past. We have been a bit of an outlier uh, in terms of our position against the other 21 authorities. Uh, I'm pleased to say that where we are now is actually seventh within, within the, the, uh, the Northwest. So we've made significant improvements actually by going down to our, 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 our figure of 10.31. If we actually had hit our target of 9.75, uh, we would have been fifth. So we would actually be made a further move to, 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 the, uh, to, to becoming the best part by, by a further uh, uh, couple of percentage points. The actual best performing in smoking time is 7.87 uh, uh, working days lost. So I think that's something that we need to strive to achieve. Uh, but if we continue along the street, I'm, I'm confident we'll continue to do so. We are, we are making inroads. And, and as I say, even though we fail to achieve our year end targets, actually we have made a significant strides forward in terms of getting a, a, a more healthier workforce in terms of, in terms of that improving our lost uh, working days. Okay. Anybody want to ask a question for them, specifically on these two exception reports, and then we'll ask them more generally? Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, we'll get that. Is there any correlation between the missed target for performance review and the sickness absence? Because I'm just conscious that you the organisation as a little vulnerable when it comes to any exiting of staff through the sickness absence. No, uh, it's the short answer. So that we, we, we do monitor regularly with our trade unions uh, and, and we also have a workforce engagement group uh, which, which looks across the, 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 the inequalities issues of workforce. I think the performance appraisals one is probably more to do with, as I say, A is close to but B also we have quite a dispersed workforce in some of our areas of activity. Uh, 
who don't necessarily work at a kind of traditional nine to five arrangement. So it's actually difficult to uh, draw people in for performance appraisals when they sometimes only work two or four or six hours a week. In the school, crossing controls, parks and gardens staff, leisure staff who are on shift patterns. So they are difficult to, to try and uh, get to a position where we can do those performance appraisals. In terms of the sickness absence, um, what we, 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 we do regularly, regularly monitor uh, the levels of sickness in those particular areas, uh, and uh, there's no necessary correlation between those. And, and perhaps more importantly, it's measuring the, what people are absent with. Uh, and that does then correlate with some of the things that you say that I think, I think most organisations, be they public or private sector, are looking at stress in the workplace as being one of the major features. Um, I've got Christina and then Mike. Yeah, I, I want general discussion. Okay, take Mike and then
world class effect, both in terms of having the counselling service available, but equally we, we have it very, very often as a, as a team briefing in terms of support, and particularly those who are who are probably more exposed to some of the, the, the significant challenges that might be to particularly around say social work teams, for example, in particular areas. But that's not to say that nobody that that's it, you know, place where you only get stress, you can get stress in, in any part of our services. And as you quite rightly said, I think in terms of private, public or all other sectors, that's something that's happening right across the piece. So, so it's something we monitor significantly. Uh, we have seen a dip uh, in terms of our stress uh, related absence. Uh, that has been encouraging to see, so hopefully some of the, some of the things that we put in place, uh, of course, as, we, as, we, as that shift takes place in musculoskeletal, becomes heavier that we need to obviously adjust our systems around that. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Okay, um, yes, <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I want to try and link what's said in the report on sickness absence, um, because it is not given its reference number, but it's TRCP04, which does pop up on the previous pages. Um, but in the little box on TRCP04, for which that page is numbered, but it's the one we did before, 35. Um, there's a reference there to verification, and the number of submissions have been over-reported being identified. Now, I happen to be present at audit because I'm now on that, and there's a little discussion there, and we're awaiting further information. But as I recall it, uh, human resources themselves asked for internal audit to look at systems to see whether the report was proper or not. And the report was produced with four recommendations which were agreed, which I can't remember what they are because they weren't spelled out in committee because we weren't that information. But I want to hear, that was Joe's here, uh, this question of what were the recommendations? Was there an under-reporting? Was there something wrong with the way some managers we're interpreting what the staff are telling them or the way they're recording it, because the implication is that somehow it wasn't a consistent approach and we were coming unstuck because of it. Okay, for you, Chair. I'd like to think back to what the actual report was saying, and maybe, maybe something we can circulate to members for, for further information, because I think there has been an update on that. But for memory, the main issue was, was it was around the teething problems of introducing the self serve system. Uh, and the actual recording of that process. Um, so it wasn't that staff were necessarily not reporting the sickness, the more managers were recognising it, which is what would be the input onto the system, and that's something that we've now taken formally as, uh, as an approach. As I said before, uh, I sit down with each of, each of my managers, they sit down with each of their managers, uh, and as a kind of a grandparent principle going all the way through that, um, that's something we've introduced to ensure and encourage uh, greater reporting. And the second element of that is, is, I suppose there's always a need for a constant reminder about the process for both reporting and recording sickness. Uh, and we're actually doing that uh, for, from next week. Uh, again, taking the lead, each strategic director for their own director, actually doing that in terms of producing that information. So it's not seen as an HR issue, it's actually seen as a good management, good practice issue. So, so it's a way from that perspective. Um, but if, if, if members do wish to see the, 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 the four points on that, we'll have to say that. Yeah. Now, thank you very much. Uh, we've finished looking at the specific exceptions. Uh, I would like to hear what members have to say about, in general, about how we as elected members look at performance, whether we think that what we look at um, is the right information, whether we think that we are able to actively contribute to improve performance. And I can see, Christine, you've got a TRCP03 as an example. Um, sitting on transformation and resources, we kept getting a similar answer throughout the year. But we don't know half the time what the question is that the answer is applying to um, in terms of that. Because put it more simply then, we don't know what we don't know, do we? Therefore, all we do is know narrow little bits. We don't know where they fit in half the time. Um, and that, I think, is confusing. We can follow these green 
and the Rex to a blue in the face. But there might be other things going on that fit into them that we don't know about. Because whoever does this template, you seem to just produce the same thing time and time again. Same, same little headings. If I were to summarise what you're saying, Christina, it is that we're not convinced that what we see accurately reflects. Yeah, I, I, think, I think somebody's made a template and we just keep churning it out. And I just wonder whether it's something that, as, as scrutiny members, we should have some sort of workshop on um, from somebody from outside to come so we can give our point of view because I don't think I'm alone in thinking that there's the stuff missed out on scrutiny that we don't actually get to. And it's not a deliberate thing, I'm sure. It's just that we continue to look at the same things. I think that certainly on families and wellbeing when we had our agenda setting the other day, this was the sort of discussion that we started to have. And Wendy, I'm sure you're able to make the point yourself tonight, but at that point, Wendy said, we don't get information which allows us to monitor trends. That's right. Um, we also, uh, we, on families and wellbeing, what was a real eye-opening for me is we get the same ones each time. The same exception reports are produced each time. They're not going really to change very much. And then winging in out of the side, was a piece of information that Wirral was fifth um, worst for alcohol-related hospital admissions, and that was a performance indicator we had never seen. So I absolutely take the point that I'm not convinced that what we see accurately reflects where the problem areas are. I'm not quite sure how best that can be done, but how best we can find that out. But if, I also recall that Several years ago, it was in 2013, I think, there was some training done um, on um, evaluating the data that comes forward for scrutiny on performance management. There's an awful lot of new members since that date, and those of us that were, were here then probably could do with some help again. Um, and I would like to add a recommendation if people are agreeable um, that not only do we know the information we've received, today, but that we establish a mechanism for training members. Um, first of all, for, um, for, for helping members to helping members to um, understand uh, the context in which these performance indicators come forward, and looking more deeply into the process to um, uh, to see if we can actually um, get a better set of ideas. I mean, that that was a real eye opener to me when I put the television on and saw that headline about Will, um, and it had never been anywhere near. Um, any, any set of performance indicators that I've seen, and that was a real sort of shock to me, if you like. So, if, in principle, I don't know if I need to formalise this, if, if, but I, I will. Can we establish a, 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 a training? Let me formulate a set of words and ask Is that all right um, to members that you can agree electronically if that's okay? Yes, David. Yes. Madam Chair, I must confess, I and to agree with the council about that you don't have the context with which these are actually produced and you don't have possibly national data benchmarking against other councils that we probably aren't familiar with. Um, I don't quite feel that you know how good good is and I, I think that's possibly a piece of information that we probably do need to know. Yes, okay. Wendy, yeah. Thank you, Chair. I think that um, to look at trends is really important as well as to look at exceptions so that we can see whether we are improving or not in various areas. Um, and as you say, I totally agree that we need a wider set of indicators. They were a few years ago narrowed down. But I think the reason um, to which <coughs> one members to study in Kathy we ended up where <coughs> one, one of the other indicators that you and I will be familiar with on families and wellbeing is this one about um, delayed transfers of care. But we don't miss, we don't need to I think actually we really need to to but we consistently don't meet the target um, on, on work we generally presented with the information. However, with ENTO, we're one of the best, we are if not the best performing authority in the Northwest, and that's a very strange situation as well, isn't it? So I don't feel that what we're getting is as robust as it needs to be for us to be able to say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Directive transformation resources developed an appropriate training and development plan for members to understand.
sound performance information data, including their analysis and evaluation. And if that means we have to go externally to do that, that would be helpful. Okay, thank you. Chair, could I ask for the question, please? It's also about the how things are. It's supposed to be, isn't it, as it fits in with the corporate plan, mm. but it's only bits of it. So I think it's more we needed a discussion as well amongst all ourselves as to how we would have to I'm sure that that can be incorporated into this session or sessions as we need them to, to, to get that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Chair, I'm on that support. I think that's a really, really good approach and certainly in terms of how we reorganise the, the uh, our, 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 our uh, overall responsibilities. We have our policy of performance and scrutiny together on the one group. Uh, so that hopefully gives us a, a real opportunity to do that. We are, we are currently looking at our performance management framework to, 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 uh, to improve that. Um, I hope I can reassure members that we, we have lots of data that we, we, we monitor on a, on, a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. What you see, hopefully, uh, in this particular committee are the, the headline indicators that has been related to the corporate plan. And those corporate plan indicators were actually agreed with. I don't, with think, I don't think we're querying how well no, the no. person performing. I think what they're saying is that we want to satisfy ourselves by what we look at. No, I don't. Authorities. We don't want to be doing something like taking a. Um, no, I fully appreciate that. I suppose what I'm saying is that in terms of now the corporate plan is almost about to be relaunched, there's a real strength of opportunity about for you to shape the particular indicators <coughs> that you want to see on a regular basis and then how we model what, how we share those with you is then absolutely part of that, that discussion. Okay, so we can leave that to the training and then we can look at that. That's all good. Thank you very much. Um, agenda item 8, this is uh, an addition. Do you want to talk us through this? Um, yeah. In addition to, uh, and it will come to each of the positive uh, forms committees. Right? Well, thank you, Chair. This, this is here really for, for information this evening, uh, again to hopefully um, demonstrate our, our, our approach to, to the policy, uh, our policy framework. Um, and what sets out for this evening? So hopefully, I, I, I do understand that needs to get something that has been formed previously. Um, but this is trying to take that a little bit stage further, trying to be preemptive uh, as quickly as we can in terms of you know, some of the policy changes that are taking place um, at a national, regional, and a local level. Um, so, what each of the, uh, the papers that are set out here for each of the policy performance committees. Uh, on this occasion, really reflect what has been identified within the Queen's speech uh, and the implications for those particular uh, policy and performance committees, and hopefully they can aid the potential for the development of the work program. Um, so we would want our policy team uh, to be picking up this, this intelligence, this data, as quickly as possible in order for it to be regularly uh, shared with, with, with committee members in order that your, your work program and also your scrutiny of those can actually take place. So, so really, they, they, they are, each one is going to go to each uh, policy performance committee. Uh, they're here on this occasion for, for, for real, uh, so hopefully supporting in terms of the development of this, in terms of going forward. Uh, but clearly, the, the, the proof will be in the public there in terms of making sure that we, as an organisation, are, are member and policy led as opposed to, to being officer led. But this actually gives the, the, real, the real crux of that information because it provides you with, with all of the changes that are being proposed. And those changes will be proposed throughout the year in you know, a whole host of different ways. Next time we anticipate that, for example, um, if we have the budget changes uh, announced in July, including as we go through the, the next, the next uh, iteration of these, then they'll have the reflections on what those are saying, what the LGA is saying, what the local government information unit is saying, but also what specific policy changes might be coming out of that equipment. But also we could reflect on maybe what the debates are out there in terms of what, uh, what other parties or other agencies are doing in terms of those aspects. And finally, so just the kind of thing, we, we talked earlier a bit about what's up in terms of our scrutiny, our strategy scrutiny goals in terms of um, health, for example. Clearly we need to know where, where health is heading in terms of, in terms of this particular issue because when we come to monitor, we need to be as educated as we can to, to pick those up. So that's what these documents will hopefully try to do. Uh, try to be creative, but certainly be ensure that you, as, as, as members, each have an opportunity to, to have as much information at your fingertips as possible about the changes to policies as we go forward. Thank you. 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 Thank you.